Uh, traffic alert for you this morning before you head out the door. Beaumont police on the scene of an accident involving an 18-wheeler and a car. It happened around 530 this morning. It happened on Interstate 10 at the MLK overpass, and that's eastbound. 12 News HD reporter Ellie Cano just arrived on scene with the very latest on the interstate. Ellie, is it shut down out there? Well, actually, Tracy, so we're on the westbound side, and if you can take a look behind me, there is an 18-wheeler uh, collision involving a four-door car there. And so before I got on camera with you guys, the westbound um, seemed to be shut down by one lane, but just minutes ago, another um, EMS fire truck pulled up. It seems that the westbound lanes are closed because of this, and I am told by Sergeant Rob Flores that this is going to take a while to clean up because that 18-wheeler did have some type of spill onto the highway. And also, there was a secondary crash on the eastbound side. There are some light poles that went down because of that crash, and the eastbound lanes are completely closed as well, so they are diverting traffic off of MLK. So we are not sure on any injuries as of yet. I did just speak with Sergeant Rob Flores, and he is going to keep me up to date on this. But it does seem to be a pretty bad wreck out here and again the lanes are closed so keep alert and uh, keep watch here as you're coming out and try to avoid this area at all costs as of right now but this is developing so we will keep you up to date on what happens out here on i-10 here out at mlk we're live in Beaumont, Ellie Cano, 12 News HD. All right, so Ellie says the accident actually on the westbound side and right. then a subsequent accident on the eastbound that shut that down as well. Light poles down on the eastbound side, so they're shut down as well. Not Make some good alternate for morning plans. Commute. Yeah, yeah, most okay. definitely. And stay with 12 News HD for updates on the road closures. We'll let you know as soon as something changes. Well, the controversy over the Beaumont ISD trustee elections in May has taken a second turn in two days with a ruling now by a Washington, D.C. appellate court. The courts ordered a temporary restraining order blocking the May 11th elections. They're now expected to be held in November. The constitutionality of a ninth Court of Appeals ruling had been questioned by the U.S. Department of Justice, which objected to the court's findings. It all hinges on a lawsuit filed by several Beaumont attorneys based on redistricting. Bond has been set at $1 million for a man police say held a woman against her will for five weeks at his Port Arthur home. Port Arthur investigators say after their first date, Jermaine Champs held an Alabama woman captive inside a closet. The woman was able, though, to escape on Monday, and police say her injuries were consistent with sexual assault, not consensual sex. Champs was taken to the Jefferson County Jail on first-degree felony charge of aggravated assault, and police say because the investigation is ongoing, there is potential for further charges. Police say Jermaine Champs used advanced torture techniques against his victim, and they believe he's done it before. One woman says she's proof of that. She asked to be concealed or have her identity concealed, so we're just calling her Kay. In an exclusive interview with 12 News HD, Kay told us that she was once in a relationship with Champs. She says she left him after two years of abuse, but then returned. When she went back to him, she says he locked her in their trailer home for three weeks. She eventually escaped, but Champs only served six months in jail for a misdemeanor charge of family assault. Now Kay hopes her story helps this latest victim and that Champs is locked away for a long time. I refuse to be a victim anymore. I've become, I've grown out of that, you know, um, and I just want to encourage people that are going through this to get help. Yeah. Kay is scheduled to give a statement to Port Arthur Police so later today. Right. Investigators say her input could be a great help in prosecuting this latest case. Prosecutors have filed charges against a man they say went on a stabbing spree at a Texas community college. 20-year-old Dylan Quick is charged with three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and more charges could come. At least 14 people were injured in the attack at Lone Star Community College in Cyprus. Each charge has a $100,000 bond. Washington's getting ready for a huge immigration rally this morning. Groups from all over the country have descended on the nation's capital to push for comprehensive immigration reform. They'll urge Congress to find a path to citizenship for the estimated 11 million people who've come to the U.S. illegally. 
Farm workers and growers have now repeatedly reached a tentative deal providing visas for those who've been here for years. Not everyone, though, thinks they should be at the front of the line. 10 million Americans, no more than a high school degree, they're looking for jobs in those occupations, can't find one, while 7 million illegal workers hold those jobs. We should focus on creating jobs for everybody uh, so that we don't have this debate on who's going to have a job and who's not. The group of eight senators working on a compromise could announce a bill as early as tomorrow. South Korea's government says the North has completed preparations for a missile test. South Korea's foreign minister told politicians this morning that the North could launch a missile at any moment, adding that the launch is, quote, highly likely. It's widely believed that North Korea will launch that missile to mark the April 15th birthday of its founder. In your business news this morning, coffee has grown to a $30 billion a year industry. Industry experts credit growth in the sale of home brewing gadgets with single serve coffee makers leading the pack. Additionally, gourmet offerings, coffee houses with hip appeal and the health benefits of the beverage are all helping to drive consumption. The Ford Focus is back on top and has been named the world's top selling car of 2012 with more than a million models sold. The Toyota Corolla came in second place with more than 870,000 sales. Toyota says when you tally up the different names they have for the Corolla, such as the Verso and the Matrix, the Corolla actually beat the Ford Focus. Still to come on 12 News Daybreak, a unique discovery for some construction workers. We're going to show you what they found and its role in history. When we come back, it's 6.08. Thanks for starting your day with 12 News Daybreak. Storm system headed towards southeast Texas. We'll tell you how it's going to affect us coming up next.